In this video, we're going to talk about a very important mathematical concept in poker called equity and its counterpart called variance. So what is equity? Well, equity, most simply put, is our probability of winning a hand. And more distinctly, it's how often we'll win a hand if the pot goes to showdown, meaning all the cards are dealt and everybody shows down their hand. It's our equitable share of the hand. So in terms of of our equitable share of a hand we're talking about our actual percentage of the hand that we should get mathematically in the long run so what it does it tells us how much we expect to win in the long run based on how often we should win a hand so let's say for example we have ace king versus pocket queens we know that the equity of pocket queens is going to be 55 percent of the time they expect to win and pocket kings well it's going to be 45% of the time. If we plug that into an equity calculator, that's what it's going to tell us. So it's really based on the probability and the odds of winning a hand. Now, in terms of poker, because poker is a form of gambling, we often think of equity as a dollar amount. So in, in other words, our long-term rightful share of the pot. So let's say, for example, there's $100 in the pot and we're talking about the pocket queens versus ace king. Well, if pocket queens are expected to win 55%, their long-term equitable share of that pot is $55, whereas ace kings is $45. Now, we talked about the percentages, so we can also think about equity in the percentage as well, that 55 versus 45%. So that's the basics of equity. Now let's talk about it from the perspective of a coin flip example. So let's say that we're flipping a coin such as a quarter, and of course the coin is going to have heads or tails, right? One side is a heads, the other side is the tails. So when you flip a coin, it's either going to land on heads or tails. And mathematically, and statistically, we would expect that it either lands on heads or tails 50% of the time over the long run, right? So if we flipped a coin a million times, we would expect it to land on heads 50% of the time and tails 50% of the time. Now, we could take that and we could wager a certain amount on it and we could look at a percentage equity. So let's say we're, we're wagering $10. Well, we know that our equitable share of that is 50% because it's gonna land, let's say we pick tails, it's gonna land on tails 50% of the time. So let's actually look at this from a monetary amount. Let's say that we're wagering $1 on a coin flip. So for wagering $1 on a coin flip, we know that our percentage equity is 50% with tails, then we would expect to win 50% of that $1 in the long run. So $1 times 0.5 is going to tell us that our monetary equity is 50%. Pretty simple, right? Pretty basic and pretty straightforward. And we can apply this to poker as well. And we can look at our equity from either a percentage perspective or also from a dollar perspective. And we want to look at it from both, and you'll learn why as we progress throughout the course. Now, I want to talk about something called variance. So let's talk about something that I call the equity caveat. And so let's talk about variance on the next slide. So what is variance? Well, simply put, variance is nothing more than the upswings and downswings in poker, meaning when we're running good and when we're running bad. Now, more definitively, we can define it as the difference between the individual results in the short term that we see compared to the average set of results we expect to see in the long term. So what this means, this means that mathematical variance can have significant unexpected short-term results where when we look at how we should be winning the hand in the long term, it doesn't match our expected equity outcome. So when we think about it, it's really it's deviations from our expected results, whether we were a favorite and we lost or we we're a dog in the hand and we won, it's deviations from our long-term expected outcome. So for example, just to give you a very basic idea of variance, let's say that we flip a coin four times and we pick heads and it lands on tails 100% of the time. Well, in the long run, we expect it to be 50-50, but variance took effect here and it landed on tails four times in a row. 
So it's looking at the difference in the short term versus the long term, where in the long term we expect it to be 50-50, but in the short term it's just results that just don't add up to what we would expect it to be. Now we typically call variance short-term variance because it's magnified in the short term, but in the long term it actually starts to dissipate. So let's actually take a look at a couple of graphs that I put together to help you understand the impact of variance in sample size. So what I did is I used an online coin flipping software and I did five different samples of a six coin flip and I went ahead and recorded it, the percentages that it landed on tails in dark and in light gray on heads and sorry that's flipped around the other way so heads in dark and tails in light and then I did a sample where it's a 50 coin flip example and we did the exact same thing so let's take a look at this and we can equate this to our stereotypical coin flip situation in poker where it's ace king versus pocket queens now I know that's not exactly a 50 50 a coin flip but it's very close being 45 I believe 55 um, now if we look at this in small sample sizes and in poker we can equate this to the short term six different hands if we look at this for sample number one it landed on heads 83 percent of the times and tail 17 percent of the times in sample number two the exact same thing in sample number three it landed on tails 100 percent of the time in sample four well we get the expected results of 50 50 and then sample number five heads 33 percent of the time and tail 67 percent of the time so as you can see the percentages are all over the place but then once we increase the sample size and if we think about poker as we increase the number of hands that were in this same situation look what we're seeing now with a 50 coin flip example for sample one and sample two it's 50 50 which is what we expect for sample three it's very close it's 48 52 for sample four it's the one that's off by the most where it's 40 percent and 60 percent but that's not a huge amount and then in sample five it's 56 44 off by a little bit so what this tells us is that as sample size increases variance dissipates and this is something that a lot of beginning poker players struggle with because in fact I had a student message me yesterday and he asked me if he should stop playing pocket queens altogether because he feels like he is losing with pocket queens all in preflop 95% of the time and he showed me the hands and in every single hand he was the favorite and for every single one he lost and I told him this is nothing more than variance make sure you go back and watch the lecture on variance because you asking the question of folding pocket queens just is very illogical and it shows me that you don't understand variance in equity so I wanted to make sure that he went back and watched that and he watched that and he responded and said okay I get it now I appreciate the response makes complete sense so I want you to understand that even if you get aces cracked three times in a session or ten times within a week out of eight times it's variance if you're the equity favorite and you're expected to win that hand let's say 70 percent of the time in the long run if you play that out 50 times or 100 times it's going to get closer and closer to that expected outcome so that's the role that variance plays in equity so let's now talk about equity from the perspective of a very simple poker example are pocket queens versus ace king so we know that pocket queens is a 55 percent favorite and ace king is a 45 percent underdog so that tells us that from a percentage perspective pocket queens has 55 percent equity and ace king has 45 percent equity now let's make this very simple let's say this is a heads up pot and it's an all-in situation in a heads up hand and there's two hundred dollars in the pot meaning that pocket queens put a hundred dollars in and ace king put a hundred dollars in let's assume that they're just playing heads up and there's nobody else in the hand so there's no additional blinds so that tells us that there's a hundred dollars between each of them in the hand well what we can do from an equity perspective we talked about their equity from a percentage perspective but we can also talk about it from a dollar amount so to find the dollar amount we take their equity percentage multiply it by the total pot size and what it tells us is the equity for each player so 0.55 times 200 tells us that pocket queens has hundred and ten dollars equity in this hand in the long run and he's king has ninety dollars in the long run now in terms of this we can actually look at it from 
a profit or a loss because both of the players put $100 in. Well, pocket queens are actually profiting $10 in the long run, and ace king is actually losing $10 in the long run in this exact situation. So, why do I want to explain that? Why did I want to talk about this? Well, that's because I want to talk about the importance of equity because equity plays an important role in every single decision that we make in poker. It really comes back to equity combined with pot odds and implied odds. Um, but in terms of knowing our rightful share of the hand, how often we're, we're going to win the hand, that's going to tell us whether we can call a raise, we can raise ourselves, or we should fold our hand. It's all based upon our equity combined with our pot odds and our implied odds. So really, all of our decisions are really going to revolve around our equity in the hand meaning how often and how much we expect to win in the long run. Um, and this really relates to something called expected value, and we'll talk about expected value later in the course. But when we think about evaluating our equity combined with our pot odds and our applied odds, this is going to tell us our optimal long-term play that we should make. Now, this also is combined with understanding pre-flop and post-flop strategies combined with playing the player and game-specific strategies. All those things combined with the mathematics, they're going to tell us our optimal long-term play. So if you don't understand what equity is, if you don't understand what probability and odds are, and as we progress in the course, if you don't understand what pot odds and implied odds are, then you're going to be making what we call our unprofitable long-term plays. So I wanted to make sure I talked about this and explained why this is important. Getting back to our last example, that's why we wouldn't want to go all in pocket twos versus our opponent that has an all in range pre flop of pocket queens, pocket kings, and pocket aces only. Because we know in the long run, our equity is going to be so low that we're not going to be profiting from that play. Now, in terms of equity, one other thing I want you to understand with it is I want you to understand different scenarios as well as pre-flop versus post-flop equity. So let's take a look at some scenarios on this slide and then we'll conclude this lecture talking about pre-flop versus post-flop equity. So common scenarios. So for a lot of pre-flop situations, you're going to see these types of things and I want you to understand it. So an over pair versus an under pair. So, for example, pocket aces versus pocket queens. Pocket aces is almost an 82% equity favorite. So that's the reason why we don't want to go all in preflop with a weaker pocket pair versus an opponent where their all in range is going to be higher pocket pairs because we're going to be a huge underdog. The other one is over cards versus a pair. Again, this one is closer. This is where the pocket pair is a slight favorite, but if there are already a raise in the pot and there are blinds in the pot, then it could dictate a call because based upon that extra money, it actually might be slightly profitable or close to profitable in the long run. So in terms of that, this is more of a common all-in situation. And it also shows if we go post-flop, our equity is going to be pretty solid as well. Now, dominated hands, this is something that's important. So there's a reason why we raise certain percentages and we call with, with certain ranges and we three bet certain ranges because of the issue of a dominated hand. So a dominated hand is where our kicker is dominated. So with both of these players, they both have a king, which we see here, but for their kicker card, well, one of them has a queen kicker and the other has a jack kicker. So this hand is dominated by this hand. And so for those situations, when we're looking to call a raise, we don't want to call a raise with the hand that's dominated with our opponent's range that they're doing maybe an open raise or a three bet or isolation raise or so forth. Because if we look at this pocket or excuse me, king queen is a 73.16% equity favorite versus this dominated hand. And I've seen time and time again where students are going to call an open raise from under the gun with a really weak ace with a bad kicker and they end up losing a lot of money to say, for example, ace nine versus ace jack or ace queen. So this is a very important one to understand. And then over cards versus under cards for hands that aren't a pair. And I put, for example, Jack-10 versus 6-8. In terms of their equity, you'll notice that Jack-10, of course, 
is almost a 70% equity favorite. So in terms of calling hands with a suited connector or an off suited connector, and ideally we're going to want to call with a suited connector, the higher up it is, the better because the more equity it's going to have. So I wanted to make sure that I talked about this because these are important points. And I want to conclude the lecture talking about preflop versus postflop equity meaning they're not the exact same thing. So I don't want you to think that, well, just because my hand was an 80% favorite preflop, it's gonna be an 80% favorite by the time it gets to the river, or we're 70% favorite on the flop, it doesn't mean that it's gonna be the same. So the further we are from the river, the more it's gonna change. The closer we are to the river, the less it's going to change. And I wanna give you a simple example of our aces versus queens. So preflop, if we look at aces versus queens, aces are a huge equity favorite, almost 82%, right? And we saw this on the last slide. But what happens if the flop comes 10-9 jack all of hearts and our opponent has the queen of hearts and we don't have a queen? Look what happens to the equity here. The equity of pocket queens increases from 19% up to close to 60% and ours drastically decreases from almost 82% to now only around 40%. So ours decreases and theirs increases drastically. And so I want you to understand that just because you have equity on one street of action, it doesn't mean that it can't drastically change. And the further you are away from the river, the more drastically it's gonna change. As you get closer and closer to the river, the less it's gonna change, but the further away you are, the more it's going to change. So anyways, that's gonna conclude our lecture on equity and our discussion on variance. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Take care.